The challenge is, is that what happens when I show up one day and in my humanity and particularly my emotions, I don't have access to those anymore. Like I can't, those don't seem to be stirring in my heart, in my life. Right. And so then what do you do there? Because now I, here I am. Um, I, I showed up to prayer yesterday and it was, it was a, this beautiful, emotive, beautiful re- reality. And here I am in prayer today and it's just, just dry and my emotions, I'm not feeling anything. Um, and I, I, as hard as I try, I can't conjure it up again, um, to, to the reality of what I'm feeling. And so we would say, oh gosh, God, God is, um, yeah, allowing me not to necessarily have the emotional experience in prayer for a particular purpose. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Yeah, Father Mark Mary. Hey, y'all. Father Innocent. Hey, Father Angelus here and there. We are <laughs> the Franciscan Friars of the Rule, and this is the Poco Poco Podcast. Welcome, everybody. Here we are. As we've talked about in the past, we are recording uh, in advance for summer, which means we're doing, you know, as we do, some that means bulk recording. And that means we're getting ready to leave town soon. Just and getting after it. <laughs> so last, we're recording the same the same day as the one on obedience. After that, <laughs> you you uh you uh totally went for it there. A little warning ahead of time. I could have like uh, I was shocked in your boldness. It was it's great. in the notes, um, but kind of. But I I we recorded it or we finished it. And it was like emotionally, it, like draining. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you did great, bro. Strong, strong so showing. We'll see what happens, but um. One of the, th- one of the like unique things so far about like feedback to the podcast, at least like public stuff, like ratings and stuff is it's very positive. It's very positive. So we'll, we were just trying to get some, <clears throat> give some things for people to criticize. We'll see if that shifts. No, no, that's, I had zero motive, I believe, other than really believing it, really sharing my heart for what it means to be Catholic in obedience. I love yeah. it. It's beautiful. And we have a Franciscan thing going on too, which is great. Yes, I also just think it's Catholic. Yeah, no, but it, <laughs> okay. but we're coming from that place, I think. Okay. Um, but also what's funny is that Father Innocent Angel has just basically gotten a fight. That is not true at all. For this episode. That is not I've true at all. I've never seen that before. It's like I've never seen mom and dad fight. That's not true. You We weren't preferring you know, not fighting. <laughs> We're just trying to you guys, bring clarity. Bring clarity. Should I sit there? Do you need to sit <laughs> Yeah, there? please, can you separate it for this episode? It was about this episode and Trying to find some clarity, clarity, get some clarity and some uh, what's the word? Uh, not not the when you just have nuance. the right word, the nuance or distinction, nuance. making a proper distinction or whatever. Um, thanks, Father Innocent, for for wanting or not Innocent Angelus. Yeah, you just called me for um being the like. Is that true, police? I appreciate that. I, I think it was the true. Fact, oh, the definitely fact was checker, true. I the fact checker. wanted to make sure. Father Innocent, thanks for nothing. Thanks for, <laughs> being, thanks for being confusing. For, uh, we've had these mugs and we haven't talked about them for a while because we just kind of kept getting after it. This is a one of my favorites, if not my favorite. This is, uh, it was Bill's mug. It's He's deceased and it was, it was sent by his wife, who's a listener. And I really appreciate that. So thank you, uh, Marie, for the mug. And I really appreciate that. We have one from Mary's Meals, which is like my favorite awesome. charity, and uh, Youth Disciples from Net. Why Disciple? Why Disciple? Excuse me. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Net's kind of evangelization arm, which is kind of cool uh, for youth ministry and different things. Liz, our friend Liz. So thanks for the goodies, Liz and Net. All right, so and um, this is we have two more episodes of asking for monthly donations. Uh, again, we're just trying to cover our, our monthly costs. We've been in a big deficit for a number of months and uh, are extremely grateful for anyone who can help make a monthly donation uh, so that we can kind of sustain and also uh, grow a little bit perhaps. And um, what's the other thing and not kind of make up for our deficit by taking ads. So thank you already for your generosity and um, ongoing generosity. You can make a donation at spiritjuice.org forward slash Poco a Poco. And um Last little news item is in two or three weeks, we're going to start a series on Hungry for God by Dr. Ralph Martin. You're hearing it at the same time, Father Angelus and Father Angelus. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, are, are we? Usually are we? when I sit behind Father Mark Marion Chapel exactly. and he reads books, I'm like, hmm, 
I wonder if that's going to show up on the he podcast. He reads books yeah. during holy hour and it's coming up. But what's funny is um, I've, it's not just like I pick up one book and that's it. It has to be the right one. I've probably read four or five books that just didn't do it that I thought were hopeful. And so this is the one that this is the next one that we're going to go through. And it's at um, Ignatius Press if you want to read along. And I think uh, I really appreciate Dr. Ralph Martin. And um, I think this is a good one and it's going to help us with some great conversation. Did you uh, warn Ignatius? No, I didn't yet. I don't know about this book or <laughs> I wonder how many they have in stock, but we'll see what happens. All right. I might tell them. We got time. Is that spirit, the spiritual life prayer? What, what, are we, what are we doing? Hungry here? for God, bro. It's just, just hungry for God. <laughs> spiritual life, interior life, Holy Spirit. Um, it's just, I, I think it's kind of like, like just kind of what we talk about, but it's good. Another of the most common fears keeping us from giving our lives fully to God is the fear of sacrifice. Hmm. Wonder if we'll talk about that. We have one guy who li- has lived in many friaries who marks up books like an animal. And you see him everywhere. And it's super obvious. And I always know who it is. And a number of the books I've picked up is the same dude. That's funny. Do you tell the guys not to I, write in the book? No. You, you say do whatever you want. Um, no, I don't say it. I, 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 there's not, it's not a thing. Should I tell people not to write them? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not so. At least write in a pencil, maybe. It is in pencil, but someone's going to go through and erase all that pencil. Yeah, I'm a big writer, and I'm a big underliner too. Underliner too. But do you ever go back to it? Yeah. Oh, you do. But this is my book. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. it's your book. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like this is yeah, this belongs huh. to me. Can I borrow that? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so you've appropriated it to yourself. Um. All right. What else? else? Do you get? Can do you guys know how to hit the whoa? <laughs> Excuse <laughs> what? Me? Excuse me. <laughs> Oh, I run uh, our social media and there's like a video of Father Sebastian like flipping a tortilla. This is a long time ago. And someone comments like, oh, uh, like, did he hit the woe? I was like, I have no idea what the woe is. I have no idea what the woe is <laughs> I've either. since learned what the woe is. And Brother Seamus knew what the woe was. Of course he does. Brother w- Seamus is no, cool. No, it was. I, but I bet nobody else in our house does. What is the woe? Tell us. It's just like, a, I'm not going to, it's just like a little dance move. You want to do, do it? <laughs> no, not at all. Zero percent. I should. I should. If I was a good host and a good human being, you can, you I should. Know. I should do it. But I'm not gonna do it. My anxiety. All of a sudden, I get stressed out. <laughs> all right. Here's the thing. If if 50 people in this episode <laughs> donate and and say and why the reason they donated to get Father Mark Mary to do the woe, he'll do it for 50 video. people. For 50 people. 50 people is a lot of people. I will. I'll hit the woe. I'll attempt to hit the woe <laughs> for 25. Uh, okay, Moses or <laughs> Noah, whoever it was. Who's no? Who was trying to say everyone? Noah. Oh, if there's only a hundred people, if there's what fifty people, if there's people, ten people. What about that? I just think it could be a little incentive. People want to see you dance on this thing. Want want, want want us well make it? I would do it for twenty five for sure. I don't know how we're gonna track. We'll do it for five minutes straight. If you do fifty, <laughs> hit, the, hit the whoa. I brought it up because it's like you know I can't, like we played this game cool not cool and you guys are not cool. I and I accept that it's okay. I've I have made myself coordinated myself as the cool police. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, at least not, in judgment, not, cool. not in re- not in person. I, You're not cool. Wasn't even close. No, it's all right. Closer than me, for sure. But did you? No, he had style, bro. But was it cool stuff? Just having. <laughs> do you think? Were you cool? You should have seen me wearing suits, man. Our, but that's. <laughs> I don't know if. <laughs> Styling. But he worked, he worked at Eddie Bauer. I don't. It's true. With I, his like kind of spiky hair and. I don't know if saying you Eddie should have seen me cool. wear suits when I was 22. <laughs> Eddie Bauer's cool, not cool, huh? Cool people say. Oh. Old Navy's more cool. Gap, one of those things. No. Is that, no Are those stories all, even around anymore? All of what you're saying, I think. Just, it just proves not, that you're not cool. <laughs> oh, Man, it's, it's talk about dryness and prayer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's what we're going to talk about. Oh gosh. And just so you know, I feel okay playing the cool, not cool, cool police game because it's okay if you're not cool. <laughs> there's no moral anything. There's no there's, there's no virtue to it at there's all. There's no actually. virtue. And there's usually like, it's the fruit of something, some sort of not usually, sometimes it's the sort of a lack. Um it doesn't mean I am cool, I just have a sense of what is cool. <laughs> um kind of hot in here. <laughs> it's warm in here. All right. Keep it together, everybody. All, all right. right here so go. here's the thing, guys. Can I be honest with you? 
I've been praying. I've been living the spiritual life for a long time. And I just feel like prayer has been really dry lately. And I just don't know. I don't know what to do with it. It just, I just keep showing up. Like, is the Lord there? I, I like, I just have a lot of doubts. What do you, what do you guys think? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should give up. No, that's possible. Yeah, the Lord's probably not there. Yeah, right. <laughs> probably, probably, probably not. not. <laughs> okay, well, that was easy. Short episode. Short All right. Episode. What do you guys got? So we're talking about dryness and prayer. I think this is a great, this is a, a great topic. And just because I think a lot of people might struggle with it. And, and I think let's, let's just say this. We, prayer is not easy. Living in relationship with God is not easy. And I think it's, we're, we're all on a journey of prayer. So I, I feel like I'm the one who like sets the context and then we'll kind of throw it out there. Cause I think, yeah, the truth is, is that we are all made for communion and relationship with God. We're made to live in this place. Um, uh, we're made to have like a deep interior life where we're living in, in communion with God, that he's speaking to us. We're speaking to him that he, again, he's Jesus is alive. And the church gives us so many different experiences of experiencing the grace of God, right. And him being with us, right. We believe that God is with us. And, and so it's just good to know that, that we're talking about a relationship with God and, we're talking about how God meets us in exactly where we're at in our daily life. And we're meant to have this relationship where, we, again, we, yeah, just prayer. Like we've talked about that probably on all the past 100 episodes, right? Prayer is real. It's for us. It's for everyone. And, and this is probably, to say concretely, the most important relationship with, in our life is, is relationship with God. Um, but brothers, we know that um, prayer is not always easy. Prayer, um, God meets us exactly where we're at, right? And so we're we have to just re recognize this this tension in our hearts that there's ups and downs, there's twists and turns. That prayer is a journey, and growing in the spiritual life is a journey. So sometimes you have good days, and sometimes you feel you can hear the voice of God, and there's a lot of joy, and there's a lot of peace, and and what the church, uh, especially in the uh, Ignatian tradition, calls consolation. You just feel really close to God. And there's sometimes some days, brothers, where there's a, there could be a lot of struggle, and there can be physical struggles, there could be interior struggles, human struggles, and we can feel far away from God, right? And one of those things we just again, where I think we're talking about it in this context is, is what happens when prayer is hard? What happens when I don't feel close to God, or I feel like, you know, I'm I'm showing up and I'm trying and I'm doing my best and and I just feel God's far away, or I don't have any interior emotional sense of, of that God, that God's close or that I can, I can hear his voice or that I'm, that I'm know what I'm supposed to do. Right. So I think this is what we're, we're talking about that it's easy prayer. You know, it's easy to pray when, and when, when prayer is full of consolation and things, but, but there's a, just a real sense that for the majority of us, sometimes prayer is really hard. Right. And so this is, this is just to frame the conversation that this is, this is a place where I think a lot of people need encouragement and a lot of people need concrete things to do to get through difficult times of prayer. I think it's really helpful, and, and maybe that's what we were talking about before the show too, just to, it's helpful to make a distinction, and you're probably more apt to, to explain it than anyone, but dryness and desolation are different. Dryness can lead to desolation, but they're, we're not necessarily talking about the same thing, you know? And so you, we always say, especially with people who are at the beginning of like a, a deeper desire for the Lord and deeper experience of prayer, they'll just misuse the term desolation. Yeah, yeah Father, I'm mean, just in desolation. And it's beautiful just to kind of stop people and a ask them to describe it when like, they really describe What do you mean by that? Yeah, they're really <laughs> describing dryness or I'm not feeling it today. I'm not feeling it like I used to, right? So in a way, that's kind of good news just to kind of help people like characterize and share their their experience of prayer and i think that's maybe a good way to start it too is that especially people who are on a journey with the lord and becoming um yeah more faithful disciples making prayer uh, more a part of their life and, and letting that affect them and bear fruit in their life even just the the encouragement in this episode just to to be more aware of what's happening in your prayer be more aware of what's happening in your heart when you pray and just be able to, you know, maybe that's why sometimes we encourage journaling as, as a helpful way um, and a helpful tool in prayer, just to kind of just begin well, like, this is what happened today in prayer. And some, most of the time, maybe you you don't have a real ability to, to, to kind of like write down amazing things that happened, but it was a little quiet today or it was a little, God seems far away today, or it was fine. Like you use kind of words that don't don't explode into like it was amazing and awesome and, and god was solely there and you know whatever that might be and so just 
it's just good to start using terms uh, correctly and, and maybe we can just help flesh that out a little bit, but um, dryness can be difficult, but desolation is a whole nother ball game, right? Yeah. And just to help kind of people start to understand what's happening in their prayer and what's happening in their hearts is, is just good. Cause then once you, can you name it? And then you can be like, okay, what's my response to it? Mm -hmm. um, and how I, how do I keep going in prayer and trusting in prayer, whether it's hard because it's dry or it's hard because I'm desolate or it's hard because I'm distracted or, or whatever that might mean. There's some good questions you can ask, right? Mm -hmm. When you, when you can, go, before go ahead. going that, can we just kind of lay some foundations? Mm -hmm. Would you be able to help give like a kind of quick, useful definition for consolation, desolation, and dryness? Yeah. So maybe I'll do consolation, desolation, and you could do dryness. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So consolation, desolation are St. Ignatius's terms that he used for like movements in the spiritual life. He uses the word spiritual consolation and spiritual desolation. So those words are immediately take us into the spiritual realm. And that's why it's going to be super important to talk about, we have our like human stuff and our, and our spiritual, there's, there's spiritual vocabulary. We're immediately in, in context of the spiritual life. That means that God, God is doing something or the enemy's doing something or, or, or that we could say like the good spirit or the bad spirit and the bad spirit could just even kind of be just certain like the spirit of discouragement the spirit of distraction like but it's but it's from that the origin which i think that before that we were trying to get a get a concrete sense of it the origin is is of desolation is 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 in the with the enemy right so consolation desolation we're in the spiritual realm god uses it's the holy spirit the good spirit to move us towards himself to um, this is Ignatius calls this, he, he pulls, he draws our hearts. There's warmth, there's delight. There's, there's a sense of peace when God, God draws us to himself. Right. And you have the lives of the saints and when people talk about their prayer. You have a strong sense that God is drawing people and it's a spiritual experience, um, that God is drawing people to live more in the truth about this relationship. And it, it transforms us kind of from the inside out. Right. And this is going to be within the first, uh, you know, rules one to four of the the rules of the, the from, of discernment from Saint Ignatius. So the the good spirit draws us, and it and it and it it draws us away from darkness. It draws us. Um, sometimes the the spirit of consolation is it, again. It tells us what's true. Um, the Holy Spirit uses it to to kind of shine His light on certain circumstances or certain prayers, and he he it's a way that God draws us to Himself. Right. This is super simple, but I, I'm not a, I'm not a pro. But and then the spirit of or excuse me, that yeah, spiritual desolation is a, is a tactic of tactic of the enemy to pull us away from the Lord, pull us away from the light. Right. So we're we're going to experience that in different ways, but it's going to be distraction or it's going to be kind of um, where sometimes it, you can describe it as like a, a veil or it's going to it's going to start attack. It's going to lie. The spirit's going to lie to us. Right. And it's going to pull us out of relationship with the Lord. And pull us away from the light. Um, so we're going to we're going to experience heaviness. Uh, we're going to experience again. It's um, people will say like, "Yeah, Father, like I just um, I was irritated all prayer, and I just wanted to get up and leave." The spirit of irritation, the spirit of frustration. Um, it's the tactic of the enemy to try to get us to leave relationship and to leave prayer. Right? It's it's spirit of heaviness. And Father, I just felt something heavy on me. Um, and those are just, I mean, St. Ignatius, you can read it. It's a lot more people that are like Tim Gallagher is like the, the, the main beautiful source in the church right now that talks about this. But those are just a few ways to talk about the spiritual experience of, uh, again, in the, in, as, we, as we experience prayer. How would you, um, oh, you want to I was just going to add into that. It's in the same conversation is, is all, where you kind of just need to be able to distinguish and wrestle with human de consolation and human desolation. Like, yep. so father, I miss my family today. Like apostle and saying is missing, missing his family. You know, that's a human desolation, if you will, yep. or a human struggle. Right. And so you deal with that differently than you would a spiritual desolation or, or something like that. So it's just good sometimes to kind of keep, sometimes you need a uh, human consolation after a tough day. Right. And so like, go have some ice cream or go on a walk with a friend or, or go yeah. something that will lift you up on a human level. Um, I was just going to, the clarity is there just sometimes we can get those confused where is this human, is this spiritual? And, and I so think, I think Father Tim Gallagher's point is that if you're going to use the rules of discernment, that's for spiritual desolation, spiritual consolation. If that, that makes sense. Right? No, it's exactly right. So if there's, if th that's, I think that's just the clarity of why he start when he teaches these, he starts out by saying these sets of rules are not for just kind of normal human desolation, human consolation, like telling you what to do. 
these these rules are very particular. They're in the spiritual realm for the spiritual life. And that makes that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But it's just good to know if if you're struggling with depression and you're struggling with like a lot of human stuff, the, the rules of discernment aren't gonna help you. Um, right. But I, I love Father Tim's thing. Um, he just often says that we have to be very careful because human desolation can lead to spiritual desolation. For sure. Right. I'm I'm sleep deprived. And I, and I, I'm just really, really tired and I'm really, I get, I'm anxious, I'm angry. And so that can just like stir around and suddenly I go to prayer and the enemy can just like piggyback on that. Um, where you, so you had, it's all kind of interwoven and again, we're giving a lot of details, but, um, for the sake of consolation, desolation, it's, it's in the spiritual realm. Um, and then maybe, and you could just talk about when we talk about humanity, that's where we talk about this experience of dryness. And it's quite simple because God cares about all of us, right? So our emotional life, our the f- physical reality of our lives, the spiritual life, where when we go to pray, we, we pray with all of us. All of us show up. And you can't so, pray without your body. Yeah, you can't pray without your body. You can't pray without your emotions. And and so like all of us are there, right? And so um, oftentimes, especially as we begin, God God loves to, to use our emotions to allow us to experience good things. And so to be happy in prayer, to be joyful in prayer, to feel the peace of God's presence, like all of that can also lead to spiritual consolation. All of, all of that's together, right? And so the challenge is, is that what happens when I show up one day and uh, in my humanity and particularly my emotions, I don't have access to those anymore. Like I can't, those don't seem to be stirring in my heart, in my life, right? And so then what do you do there? Because now I, here I am, um, I, I showed up to prayer yesterday and it was this, this beautiful, emotive, beautiful re- reality. And here I am in prayer today and it's just, it's just dry. And my emotions, I'm not feeling anything. Um, and I, I, as hard as I try, I can't conjure it up again um, to, to the reality of what I'm feeling. And so we would say, oh gosh, God God is, um, yeah, allowing me not to necessarily have the emotional experience in prayer for a particular purpose. And oftentimes we would point to the fact that as we mature in prayer and we can persevere in not feeling prayer like I used to or like I'd hoped, things can mature and things can deepen because it goes beyond my feeling. Like the relationship is not about only what I feel. Um, it's about something uh, much deeper and my experience of God, my choice for him. Um, and, and that's the, how the maturing happens when you're in relationship with someone. It, it, we do joy have a, this emotional experience of being together, but something goes beyond it and something goes deeper than it. And you start to say, okay, I might not like particularly feel this day, but I'm going to choose to be with you. I'm going to choose to serve you. I'm going to choose to receive from you and to listen to you. And so that's, that's the maturing of relationship when you go beyond just how you feel. And so God can allow dryness. God can use dryness. Sometimes we bring the dryness on ourselves for particular reasons, you know? Um, but it's just important that, you know, what do we do with the dryness? And, and we don't freak out over the dryness, we're going to talk about it, but like, how do I respond to the dryness? But that's generally where it com- comes from. It's just this lack of emotion or lack of, a, uh, yeah, affective within a- yeah, And it, it's, in our, it, it's in our humanity, right? It's yeah. just like kind of just where we find ourselves, right? Yeah. Father Angels, you used another word that's like a little new to me. Uh, if you could define it, you said emotions. What are, you, <laughs> what are what are those? No. What are those? What you don't um, use your emotions in prayer? I'm, I'm, I'm You're not a low. very emotional guy. No, that was the that, that was, was the, the goal. joke. Those the joke. those who get it get it. Those who know me know. Um, all right, so that happened. What did you say right at the end there? What was your thing? I was just so laughing at my own emotions. I don't joke. know. I've been holding yeah, on to I don't know, but I do. I do just want to say that we what we talked about is that. Spiritual direction, spiritual friendship, being being able to talk about these things is helpful because what we want to try to to notice, and we're not going to try to figure stuff out. We don't try to figure stuff out in prayer, or like it's not. What we, we don't want to be self focused and self referential. But as we experience our prayer, we just want to notice what the movements that are going on. And Father Ann just mentioned, like, okay, like I'm feeling this way. Is this is this a spiritual thing? Am I being attacked? Is there is there a temptation? Right. And am I feeling like, oh man, like I'm frustrated or there's a heaviness or so. So when I, when I walk with guys in spiritual direction or, or the postulants, let's just like, can you say a little, can you just say a little bit about when you say desolation, what do you mean? And they're, they're able to, to recognize what, like, oh yeah, father, like this, like, I feel really discouraged in prayer. I feel far away from Jesus and I feel like I just want to give up. Okay. That's totally not of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Like that's not, you're being beat up. You're being tempted. Right into Father Angela's point in show prep, like okay, God, God, 
That's it's not that's not God's desire for you. It doesn't have its origin in God. But God's going to use this now. It's for you to to make an act of faith and trust in His goodness for you right now. And there's no easy way to get out of desolation. But you start to notice like what is of God and what's not of God. Um, sometimes someone will just say, "Yeah, Father, like prayer was really hard today. Um, mm-hmm. I had a tough phone call home last night. I was just didn't sleep that well. And then one of the brothers frustrated me, so I went to Holy Hour just like distracted. Okay." Let, let, let's talk about that, right? There's a difference. You see the difference, like prayer was harder or, or, or more difficult for different reasons. And so you just start, want to start to notice these things because when there's dryness in prayer, we just want to know that there's different medicines, right? Sometimes there's a real, like you're getting attacked. There's a temptation. There's lies that are being spoken to you. And God is, God is using this to help, to, to, to help you grow and to help you be purified and and, and to say, continue to say yes to him or the medicine sometimes is like, bro, like they tell you, they tell you a lot, like you just, need to go, you just need to go take a nap. Everything's going to be fine, <laughs> you know? And then you catch back up on sleep and then prayer like makes a little bit, just, it's it just a little easier to enter into. Now I realize that's like really elementary because sometimes dryness is persistent or sometimes it sees, there's different seasons of prayer and we, sh- we should definitely talk about that. But I think there's just a good beginning to see, like, what are we dealing with and what the medicine is? Because there's different things. Okay. So what do you guys think? Uh, I'll let you kind of help navigate the conversation. Is the best question now, like, how do you discern desolation versus dryness or what the cause of it? Or is there another direction that you think would be the, a better next question? It's a good Like, Ange, did we, did I, I want to have a reverence from what you Absolutely. were talking about that, that, that Ignatius and Tim Gallagher definitely do say that, that that um that desolation is god uses desolation for sure um but again i just wanted to bring clarity and kind of reverence the fact that it's not always as simple as we think it is yeah sometimes we can be the cause of the struggles we have in prayer and that's real our weaknesses our sins our choose maybe we choose the world and choose distraction rather than god like then i can go to prayer and it might be dry or it might be desolate because i've made choices that distance myself from god right and so and generally they say, right, when you're, when maybe you're in a tough spot in prayer, like experiencing desolation, like it's, it's always good to start with yourself. Did I do something, um, that disconnected me, um, from the Lord? Did I, did I turn away and make choices for other things? And we often talk, especially in our way of life, the world can get in pretty quickly. And so then therefore it's like worldliness kind of, uh, tempts me away from, uh, for away from the Lord. Right. So if I made a choice for worldliness and then all of a sudden I'm going to prayer, but I, but I'm consumed by worldly things and worldly distractions. And then I go to prayer and experiencing attacks of the, of the evil one. And, um, and then all of a sudden you're like, Oh yeah, I definitely brought that on myself. I, I definitely opened the window or the door to that. Then that's a great, that's a real, uh, desire to, to be aware, but also repent. Okay. I'm going to repent and I'm going to, I'm going to say, oh gosh, yeah, I, I know exactly when I turned away. Right. Mm-hmm. The, and that's, uh, you would agree, probably that's pretty easy discernment. Like, yeah, I just, was just having a tough day and all of a sudden I'm, I chose distraction and I chose or sin, the world, or, or, sin or, or the world. And then therefore it affects, and that's why it may be just good to know and just kind of let this hang out there. Like our choices uh, affect our prayer. Like when we choose worldly things, when we choose distraction, when we choose to fill our soul and heart with other things, you better believe it will affect your prayer, right? And it's just good to mm-hmm. it's good to know that, like, you know, um, my my weaknesses can affect my prayer life. Um, my choices can affect my prayer life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if if it's not the case, if I if I'm pursuing the Lord in virtue and pursuing in the state of grace, and I'm I can go through that, like, well, I, to the best of my ability, I didn't I don't know if I did anything to um, disconnect my, my experience with the Lord, then you're like, okay, this could be, uh, God could be allowing this to remind me that I'm weak and poor and need him, right? Remind me that all good things and graces come from him. Ignatius talks about that. So the Lord could be trying to, uh, reorient my heart back to, back to him. And so I'm experiencing this desolation or experiencing this dryness because God's wanting me to turn fully back to him and, and make choices, uh, or come to understand um that i'm that i can't control prayer and i can't manipulate prayer and and prayer is not my own project so sometimes i could experience those things based on um doubling down on the gift of prayer and what god wants to do in prayer Mm -hmm. um so it's good it's just good to kind of try to like again as we aware of our heart and aware of our prayer time where what's happening spiritually it's just you have a little discernment checklist 
is this of me? Is this what God's allowing? And then if God's allowing it, what does he need from me? Well, he usually wants my heart to be turned back to him in gratitude and praise or for what he wants to do. Great. Thanks, Father. Um, I think one thing just funny. So the your guys' little tiff was Father Innocent wanted to say that desolation is never of the Lord, right? Yeah, and that's true. Like, and Father Angels just had the principle, the night, was it ninth? Ninth rule. The ninth rule, yeah. Which says there's three causes for desolation and two of them were the Lord. But then there's the explanation that by cause, we don't mean, what do we or, mean? We don't mean origin. Origin. Yeah. You guys okay? You guys need to hug it out? <laughs> no, I, I just think that's important because I think um, Tim Gallagher's whole ministry is usually for lay people. And that's why he spends a lot of time saying people live with desolation a long time. And, he, and he, the good news is that's why he named his book Setting the Captives Free because God is God's will is not that people are in desolation. Absolutely, God will can like use that's it. rule nine that God can use it and allow it. And, 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 and that's just kind of the, the spiritual movement there that God's going to be victorious over it all. But we are absolutely made to be free, and we are. And Ignatius has his three three rules: you become you become aware of the desolation, you understand it, and you act against it. And acting against it, against it is what God wants. I trust in you, Jesus. I love you, and I'm gonna stay with you. And that's that's where um, I think Andrew's talking about Rule Nine, where it's like I'm gonna allow you to come back to me and choose me and strengthen that. Yeah, and so it's basically what we're talking about is the discernment happens, and then you recognize it's desolation, you stand against it. Yeah. Right? But the discernment could be because I've sinned, or it could be because God's using this for a deeper conversion and a deeper grace. Mm-hmm. And you're like, but I'm not gonna wait to. Be, I'm not gonna be like, all right, well, I'll just kind of hang out in this and see what the Lord does. It's like, yeah. no, that's not God's will for me to kind of be sure. beat up by the evil one. You know? And and I'm going to go through specifically, I think, uh, a couple of questions like I would ask somebody to try and get a read on just first of all, just like kind of checking to see if it, if it like what what's natural mm-hmm. at play here. Right. And so uh, like a number, a first thing, initial thing I'm going to try and get a read on is like, does this person just basically, are they like emotionally integrated? Do they have access to their heart? Right. Because if, if you, have for whatever reason, kind of subdued and disconnected from your emotions, and you don't really have access to them, that act that's gonna that's gonna overflow into your spiritual life. Yep. Agreed. 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 And so that's okay. And then, um, and I'm gonna just maybe do something kind of quickly, and we can come back to and do whatever. Like, and so often, like if it depending on the the gravity of that, that's general. That's often be something that could be like worked out in like a counseling situation. If it's like really something that's like I've kind of flipped flip the switch on emotions that's going to be a great place to kind of work through those. Right. And then that's going to affect our spiritual lives. Any disagreement there? I just love the fact when people start to become healthy and they start to get access to their emotions, just to kind of be like love watching them like, Oh my gosh, I'm feeling things I've never felt. And I'm like, and it's just kind of like a fun when people start to heal and all of a sudden, sudden it's like, Whoa, let's go. Second one. I'm, I'm still looking for waiting for that to happen. All right. Second one. Uh, (laughs) Is it just, is it kind of like a, a, a distraction that you've played a part in facilitating, right? And this is one of the, I think it's a, uh, Charles Borromeo, one of his, his things for like the priest is the priest complaining about being distracted at mass. And so I asked him like, what were you doing in the sacristy, right? And so there is that nature of like, okay, before you came in to, to pray, like, like, what are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you worrying about? Like, is, what, like, is there any ways in which some of your inability to kind of like be focused and to really pray and to encounter the Lord? Like, is, is there some other thing that like you're doing, which is just making this very, very difficult because essentially you've like set your mind running 120 miles an hour in a hundred different directions. And that's just not great for it. That's why this is hard. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, um, and I, I use kind of like the idea of like um, sort of like light pollution. You should let so much in there and you want to see like like the the candle of the like the Lord's presence. And it's like you've got all this stuff going on. You're not going to. Yeah, it's going to be hard. Sure. Okay. Uh, a, a third one I do think is there can be just like a lack of effort. There can actually be like I'm kind of I go into the chapel and I just sit there and like I, I lazily maybe read through a gospel or I lazily try and sort of recognize the Lord and I'm really not feeling anything and nothing's happening, but it's just because there's at this point in your prayer life, there's like some effort required that you're not putting into it. This is the, when we are at the early morning, holy hour, every once in a while, every once in a while I'll fall asleep. Maybe I had a heart. And then he always like, doesn't miss it. Hey, are you okay? 
like he'll come in after me. And it's just, I, the, the honesty there is at some point he's just like, I, I'm just tired. Right. So very rarely, but he's it's like, not a judgment. I just, and it's not like, helpful hey. that I'm sitting behind people. He's like, hey, so I okay? just feel bad for him. I'm like, oh man, he's tired. Very rarely. It's my favorite part of the day to pray, but it's just really funny. And I, and that's why I'm admitting publicly. It's like, at some point I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I'm with the Lord, but I'm just tired. <laughs> so I'm Was, get, I give in. Has that something, did you, do you fall asleep? Did you fall asleep more in the past? No, the five o'clock holy hour is still, still an open ball game. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the morning one. I'm talking about the morning one. Usually 95% of the morning ones is totally fine, totally engaged. But sometimes when I'm tired, I'll like, may I'll be okay with the choice. Yeah, I'm just going to fall asleep. Here. Yeah. But the five o'clock after a long day when you go, it's like, I think I'm better because I, I, I try to take naps. You need to take a nap. But I try to confer life. Because <laughs> um, there was like a joke about Father Angelus back in the day that like, he like wake up at 4.30, have a cup of coffee uh whatever you do brush your teeth go to the chapel sit down go back to sleep <laughs> like that whatever but that's not the case anymore no the five o'clock one is they, the five o'clock in the, in the afternoon morning, the afternoon not one the is four harder. 35 yeah. one in the morning all right um okay and then i was just admitting that i'm lazy just pretty much <laughs> i don't know if that's what happened you might have just said that you were tired <laughs> um we had two guys fall asleep during the homily today Seriously. Yeah. The, who don't, one, one of the brothers said he'd never done it before. And the other, He's tired, huh? it well, no, it, there was like a, th- a two page quote being read. Did you hear that? I was, I had the mass. I was assigned the mass. I knew you were assigned the mass, but I, I was at the sisters this morning Yeah, and realized that I didn't tell anybody. Okay. I I mean, I told people. Did I Father Glenn get to take the mass? No, I called Jeremiah and told Jeremiah to go talk to Father Glenn and tell him to take the mass. Okay. Anyway, that was my, fault. he took the mass, which, because we also had a, a quick, uh, we had a meeting today, which gosh, God bless him. Should I just had told me come tell you? <laughs> you should probably tell the vicar. Yeah, that's exactly what should happen. <laughs> um, I thought Father Gabriel Manuel had the mask, but it was just there was just an extended quote, and so two people fell asleep, and one of them said he'd never done that before, and one of them did like one of the head bob things. Lazy, lazy. Oh, it was a good quote. Um, all right, uh, another one is it a lack of desire? Right. I think there can be a place that we're coming, we're coming, we're just coming to prayer and coming to the Lord, just like really satisfied and full of other stuff. It's like you just ate a bunch of junk food or, I mean, it could just be a lot of different stuff, to be honest. There can be like an overdoing it and a lot of like relatively good things, but what it ends up doing is just kind of quenching a desire and a kind of a hunger and a need for the Lord. And so you're kind of coming to him, not with much right there's not a lot of fire mm-hmm. in that in that prayer and that um right and that can be uh one of the natural causes of dryness yeah okay i think it bro that's i think those are great questions thanks yeah any that you would ask that i missed no i i just was thinking about like my own experience which like to get this is kind of get to get the lay of the land and i like how you kind of go deeper and just these are, these are all different facets. You're kind of have a, there's like a well, you're kind of hitting a lot, like a lot of areas. So I really like that. Of course, sin. I didn't, I don't, I didn't think I put sin in there, but sin, you already said sin, but definitely sin. Ignatius just generally starts there. Just like it generally is this, this is just a good thing to check off the box in case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I like, I just, yeah, I think they're, they're strong questions. And again, a lot of us, you know, you might have a spiritual director, you might not, where you can, someone's going to be asking you, like, all right, they're, they're helping you kind of navigate. But I do think the encouragement is that we can navigate with the grace of God our own heart. Yeah. And you can just take some of these questions and say, okay, like, what's happening right now? Yeah. This is a natural thing. It, the kind of the dryness, my, my life, I'm tired, all these different things. Like you said, is it from the Lord? Like, okay, you're going to, you're going to grow in sensitivity, understand that movement. And they're just great questions because you just want to be attentive. And it takes practice, but you'll under you'll start to understand your heart, and 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 there's going to be good reasons why you're experiencing what you're experiencing. Mm-hmm. Getting information is helpful because then it just allows you to be like, oh, okay, like, and often sometimes we're not we don't really know what's going on, and that's okay. That's part of it too. Sometimes it is a mystery, and God doesn't want, want us to be in control, so He doesn't allow us to fully understand it. But most of the time, there's just the, an ability to kind of acknowledge my heart and acknowledge what's happening, and then just be like okay, so then I can be at peace. I don't, nothing's really wrong, right? Nothing's, um, I don't freak out, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You know, I can, I can acknowledge something, repent if I need to, learn 
and and make a as Nick just like make a firm disposition for tomorrow, you know. And I, but I don't have to get all frazzled and I don't have to freak out and I don't have to let it kind of disconnect me even more from from my relationship from the Lord. So information becomes just helpful, just to be able to learn and grow and be able to, be able to like to keep moving, um, rather than to get all worked up about it. Great. All right. So what do we do next? Uh, so I want to make one more comment about the uh, just kind of maybe maybe more of a general thing, and I think it would be good to maybe just give people some like I think these questions are great, but like maybe just give some like some simple coaching and how do people get people through dryness maybe. But mm-hmm. one thing I one thing that was just on my heart is um, that just could could be helpful um, is it just to, always to taking to account. Just that um, there's the re, re, what I I guess what IPF calls like the relational dynamic of prayer, and it and so again prayer is a relationship and it, it's real, but it has a similar dynamics of a of a of a of a real human relationship as well, and so this is why I think it's important is because like you you think about a husband and wife, and you think you have like you go through different seasons in life where okay so we fall in love and there's a real like emotive experience and and what the it's just very strong and when you're in each other's presence and and it's just like this whole it's new and it's there's a depth and i mean you're again i what's happening in your heart people know more than me but like it's just wonderful and there's a relational dynamic of falling in love Mm -hmm. but then also as time goes on like okay so we we grow to to love each other but also like okay the weaknesses start to come out and and time has time has a, has a factor and, and, and maybe there's suffering and like seasons of life where you're going to have to, you're going to have to respond differently and like, okay, this is not as easy as it used to be. Or there's like the stage of falling in love, puppy love. And then now you have to like, oh man, now it life's hard or he annoys me, <laughs> you know? And so you're, you're, you're paying attention to your heart there. And then and then you just, again, you have the normal human dynamics of getting married and, and having kids. And now you're both sleep deprived. And now your relationship, your the relational dynamic changes there too. And you're like, I really love you, but I feel different than I did years ago. And I have to choose it more and I have to trust more. And some, some things are left unsaid rather than speaking, right? There's like, there's this, the intimacy, intimacy goes deeper because of the, uh, because of the circumstances and the love that's shared. Um, but just, you're just taking into account that relationships change over time. And, and it, the same is true. Um, for the spiritual life is that um, just because we're talking about dryness that, you know, that your relationship with God might start off like where when you read scripture, things just come alive and the imagination comes alive. And, and it's like, you're falling in love with God for the first time. And it's very beautiful, but, but there's also something at play where, you know, we, we grow deeper and we, and God wants us to not just kind of love him because things are nice and feel nice, but he, we have to start making sacrifices for love, or I have to start make, making, I have to keep making a commitment to trust. I have to make, again, more time and things just change and, and that's okay. Right. And, and you, you kind of maybe you'll long for the days when this was easier, it just felt different, but it's, it's the same relational dynamic where your, your love can start off a certain way and over time it gets purified and it goes deeper and we have to love when it's hard. And, and all this stuff just, just quickens and, and purifies our love. And it doesn't necessarily feel good. Um, but, but because it, because it's God and, and because he is love and, and he knows us perfectly, like God is always drawing us deeper, but he, but he, but there's a purifying aspect to it. Um, so I just think, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's probably not explained the best, but I do think it's just to be aware of the relational dynamic that dryness or struggle could come and it's not a bad thing. It's something we experience in real relationships that help us grow and to be selfless and to sacrifice for love. And that actually is good for us. So I know we could, we could transition into like, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing dryness in prayer and okay, Lord, but like, I know you're real. I know you love me. And, and you know, when I read, when I read scripture or I'm doing my holy hour, like I get distracted or, or, you know, I just feel like I'm not, I'm not as close to you and it makes me kind of sad or like, or whatever that kind of could be. It's just really good to be like, you know, but, I, but I love you and I know you love me and I, I want to grow and I want to be, I want to be purified and, and I'm going to just stay here with you because this is a part of relationship is, is staying with the one we love and being purified even when it's difficult. Um, so I just think it's important because it's not, nothing's wrong when you're, there's dryness. 
it's a part of the, the relational dynamic. And um, I just think it can be important because we, we, ha- we suffer for love in other ways. And it's, we have to suffer for love with the Lord as well. Beautiful. Just the, the seeing it in a human way, everybody's like, of course that changes and grows and that dynamic changes over time. Of course it does. And so it's going to be the same spiritually. And it gives us like a, okay, like I can, I can persevere and I can trust in the midst of whatever's happening in my heart spiritually because it happens in other ways. Okay. And so if I can just kind of process out loud and you guys can help give it some direction is, um, all right. So again, so someone's ex- going they're they're praying, they're praying every day. And for a while they're just kind of experiencing a dryness. All right. So if, would kind of the first step be just to do some of these like natural checks? Okay. Like, is there something, is there something that I'm kind of contributing to this and, and kind of prayerfully kind of, okay, looking, examining your life and then making some necessary adjustments, right? That's straightforward. Pretty Okay. Simple, pretty all right. Simple. Yes. Now, now you go through all that and um, there's nothing really popping out. It's just like, okay, I'm just, I've been, I'm praying for a while and I'm actually like morally doing pretty good. I think emotionally I'm doing pretty good. I, um, I live like a pretty clean sort of content life. Um, but it's been pretty silent. It's been pretty silent. Is your is your encouragement there to make acts of faith and just kind of to persevere, or what? Like, what do you what are you saying to that person? I I would say again, I like the question. So natural. I think your questions are great. Just to have if guys, if people can remember, write those down. Okay, and then I recognize. Okay, I'm still in it. This is still hard. I I oftentimes try to tell people that I, I really believe that it might be a small fountain, but I do think there's like fountains of grace places, right? So I don't think we just have to kind of like, well, let me just, I'll just like gut it out. Mm -hmm. Um, But hey, like, is there a particular image or a scripture passage or, you know, if I'm sitting in front of my adoration or or, or something that like, if there's a Psalm that I can read that kind of stirs my heart, right? Like you, you know, there, again, there's, there could be things humanly, spiritually going on but I do think there's small things that can stir the heart and then keep us anchored. So that's another thing I'd ask. Okay, so you've done all these things and okay, but they're still dry or I feel just a little, yeah, just, you know, maybe just, I, I feel not necessarily connected with the Lord. There's small things we can do um, that that can really kind of stir the heart without like taking control or being distracting. So, so I, if I can just kind of uh, give some distinction. So just like to kind of like, cause this can be personalized. Okay, is mm-hmm. there is there some method of praying if you will if there is is there some particular fountain of grace for you like and that could be something you go back to again and again and just to kind of seek that out and yeah and i do think probably right um that's not something that's going to be changing every like six months and so as you kind of establish your own personal spiritual life there's going to be a couple maybe just maybe even one but a couple of like okay i can just i'm going to go back to this psalm or i'm going to go back to yeah. this sort of practice and usually the rosary is helpful for people yeah. like a decade of the rosary like people just can whatever sure. anchors them so i think something like that could could encourage people yeah i would i would be careful in these in this particular situation too just to make prayer busy work mm-hmm. because it's not going well perceived not going, you know because it's dry so when you're talking about moments of grace those are those are things that lead me to stay connected when opening up a book and reading four chapters during my holy hour, just because it's this is not going it's easy. well, it's not going well, is not necessarily leading me to connection, mm-hmm. right? I mean, and even if I don't feel it, so it's the idea of cluttering up or busying up my prayer because it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, you, we just want to try to protect ourselves and yeah. try to try to avoid, which I think we all can do. Now, sometimes all all when we teach the pashans and we kind of walk with the pashans early on, it's just like, yeah, have a book in holy hour because if holy hour becomes tough. You can do some spiritual reading to get you reconnected, but not do some spiritual reading to get you through it. So I can or get you out of it. Go to dinner, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So there's, and there's a big difference, right? And it's it's not study time. Mm-hmm. It's not I can't wait to read this because I'm, I'm learning. I want to learn during holy hour. No, it's connection time. It's relationship yeah. time, right? But we all have our our uh, defense mechanisms when things are hard. Well, I'm just going to do this, or I'm going to do that, or I'm going to journal and not look at the Lord at all, yeah. you know, or whatever. Um, one thought, second thought is, is, um, I think it's always important. We talked about this guys too, but it's just like, if I'm feeling something in prayer, if I'm, it is always good to ask the Jesus about it. Like, Lord, what, if, if it be your will, like just through the gift of the Holy spirit right now, help me know what you want me to know about what I'm experiencing. 
like, Lord, I'm, I'm experiencing dryness. I'm, I'm a little sad right now. I'm a little disconnected. Like, just come and help me. Come and be with me. Come and reveal to me your heart for me in this. Because, because again, Jesus, we're, we're within his will, whether it's he's, he's doing something intentionally to lead me and guide me and pull me deeper or, or because of my own struggle or sinfulness that he's just allowing me to feel being disconnected. So I make a, a, or a, a firm purpose or a men to, 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 to uh, pursue him even more. Um, it's just good. Like, Lord, what are you doing here? Like, what do you want me to know? Like, just through the gift of your Holy Spirit. Like, what do you want me to know about my particular current spiritual state? You know, and Jesus generally loves to to guide us and loves to lead us. Um, um, so anyway, I just that that that's a bit elementary too, but it's just always good to start uh, with Jesus. Like, Lord, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You know, and help me to understand if it be your will that I understand this. Both of those, like, perfect, perfect. I, I do love that. Just um, relating everything to Him, mm-hmm. you know, and, and starting there, and probably even probably probably passed over that too quickly before you maybe go through the whole like natural checklist. Yeah. Is first of all relate this to the Lord, you yeah. know, that's step one, right? Um, We're aware of it and we just can be with Jesus. In right, it. right. Um, and then uh, I do, I love that because you just kind of have the idea of like, again, some person in like a prayer group or in like a, whatever, they, they maybe make like a public holy hour or they're on a mission team. And it's like, well, I am, I'm like, prayer's really hard. It's not like socially acceptable to pull out like a, some sort of a, police detective novel but i can pull out some spiritual reading and yeah, that's it. but it's like it's basically doing like i'm doing it just to kind of get through and survive but it, i'm it's just like a baptized mm-hmm. distraction it's not really a solution i just totally think a lot of people probably will resonate with that <laughs> father angela said stop doing that stop it don't I'm do not, it i'm not conf- i'm not what's the word i'm not I know what you're doing. I'm not fooled. I'm not fooled. If I could just also add just, um, I know we're getting close here. Um, I don't know if it's necessary to always make judgments and evaluate our prayer mm-hmm. at the end of it. Like, oh, this was awesome. Or, oh, that like this was horrible. Or, oh, this was like totally too. I think we get in a, we have like a culture of judgment, a culture of just like, I'm going to, I'm going to evaluate everything, you know? Um, and if prayers about bringing relationship with the Lord, like, you know, it's not like we hang out together and then later we like, hey, how did that go? Like, like, do we do we need to make evaluation or evaluate our time together? Because between friends or between lovers or it's just like, yeah, Lord, it was just nice to be with you. And then go to dinner, like, or, or you know, do your thing. Be continue to be faithful to what God is calling you to do. So I think there's a culture of evaluating and how did that go and how do and I think evaluation uh, reorients things back to ourselves. And it makes it on, on on a natural level, just makes more it more about me rather than just kind of surrendering to what God is doing and like surrendering to the mystery of it. Yeah. And that turning that judgment switch off is helpful because then you can you like you can just remain like you're just reminded of what's most important that we I, I was faithful. Like that's a big thing I, I guess that was kind of going on in my heart. Like sometimes when it's dry, just be be faithful, right? Be faithful in your time of prayer. Like show up. And there's all these different things you can do to, to, to kind of foster and quicken or whatever image you want to use to like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to be faithful here. But, um, but again, it's just like, it's not, it's not, it's not all on you. Like Jesus is, Jesus loves you. So happy you're there with him. And I mean, and he's giving you the grace. You, you, you're not disqualified because prayer is hard or it's dry. We just want to be, remain faithful and open and then, then that judgment switch can be turned off, and then you're like, okay, Lord, like it's just you, like you're good, and and you're faithful, and I'm gonna move to, I'm gonna move on to the next best thing. I love it. All right, so we can go to one of two directions in our ending here. Um, would it be helpful to say just a little something on pushing back on desolation? Yeah, or, I, or yeah. would you rather just recommend a book or something like no, that? That's helpful. I think well, I think I think I mean I, I think we just brought it up as one of just one of the things to be attentive to, right? Desolation's real, and, but it's different than dryness, and that's why yeah, I think it was helpful. I think that's why up. we yeah. it got brought up in the first place. And if you're in desolation, like it, it you know Ignatius again, there's a there's a great um, book that Father Timothy Gallagher writes on consolation, desolation, discernment of spirits. All his stuff is incredible. He's like one of the most um, prominent Catholic speakers now on, on Ignatian spirituality. Um, but what we want to do is, is, is ex- especially when you're experiencing desolation is we just want to, you, you just want, again, you're just being attentive. I, um, Ignatius has three steps. You become aware of it and you understand it. Okay. This is what's happening in my heart. I understand that 
okay, this is desolation and this is what's happening. And, and, um, this is not, this is not of the Lord. Like this is, I shouldn't just sit here and get beat up by this. And I act against it. I make an act of trust and, and an act of faith and, a, and an act of kind of abandonment to what God is doing right now. And then that's where God can use it. Okay, Lord, I trust you. And I'm going to come all in for you. And, um, so I think that's just really important here as again, as you recognize that there's a certain type of heaviness or as you recognize that we're not just dealing with natural things, um, Jesus wants you to be set free. Right. And so again, it's, it's super simple, but I just think to for your heart to be attentive to the spiritual battle in prayer, because remember the enemy is, um, the enemy does not want you to pray. He wants to get you discouraged. He wants you to get you distracted and he'll use all these different things to do that. And if you're recognizing that there's a spirit, more of a spiritual battle here, uh, you have an authority in your baptism with the grace to say, you know, no, like I understand I'm going to trust in Jesus and I'm going to stay. I'm not going to make any changes. Um, and, and Jesus obviously will be faithful to you. And, and, and I think, um, just making that act of trust is kind of where, where the strength lies. It's just important too. Like this is what we mean, we mean by spiritual warfare. This is what we mean by lead, being in like a, a spiritual battle. Like it, that battle is real and there's a battle for our souls and our hearts every day. Um, good versus evil, um, Jesus versus, versus Satan, right? The, the real reality of the battle for our hearts. And so spiritual warfare is I'm experiencing something that's not of the Lord and with God's grace and, and with all that I am, I'm going to, I'm going to choose against it. And, and so we might have to do that day uh, all day. Mm -hmm. We might have to do that in different circumstances or in different relationships. But like, I guess one of the things is that an encouragement in a conversation like this is that, are we in the battle? Like, do we make choices to engage spiritual warfare? Do we, do we engage the grace in our lives? Do we engage our will sometimes when we don't feel it? And I have to make choices. You might truth. just have to make yeah, an act of the will. Exactly. I trust. Actually yeah. more, more than often. <laughs> just like, Lord, I trust you. I love you. I know who you are. I know you're good. And I know you're merciful. I know you're powerful. And I now in this moment, I give my life to you rather than this despair, the discouragement or whatever's happening in my spiritual life right now. Right. And so that's a huge, that's the spiritual battle. Right. And, and we do that and we experience God's presence and his deliverance. Um, and then we keep going, right? And so just the spiritual battle, spiritual warfare is a real thing, you know, and um, and whether we're at the beginning of our spiritual lives or, or maturing in it, everybody kind of fights that battle in normal ways, right? And that battle might be a little easier when I'm just distracted by ESPN or I'm, I'm and I experience dryness because it's like it's, <laughs> I'm taking the, the football scores to holy hour and I just get kind of caught up in that. Or there's a real despair and discouragement in my life and, and the evil ones atta attached him to that. And now I have to stand against it and choose the Lord, right? So wherever we're at, um, it's real, but we have to be actively engaged in it rather than just kind of taking it and, and sitting back and being a victim to it. I think this, there, there could be so many episodes on like prayer and like these experiences of prayer. I think it's just so helpful for people because people desperately long to pray and, and it's not, and we know that prayer is not easy. So my brothers and sisters, we just want to encourage you. Like we talk about prayer a lot. And, and even this episode, we're just attempting to talk about some of the struggles. It's just so important because you're made for prayer. You're made for communion and it's not easy. I'm just like any other relationship. And, but, but I, I, I do want to say just in the, in the school, of life, um, like God, like God wants, God wants us to be lovers and he wants us to, he wants us to grow. And so uh, what, like, and so it's, I, I say the school of life because I, I think again of families, like, like husband and wife, they love each other and then they have children and, and their whole vocation is purifying for the sake of their love. So they can love like Jesus. And they can grow, right? And 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 so that's just so beautiful because like in the school of life, it purifies us. I don't want to be afraid of that word because even in our spiritual life, God wants to purify us and he wants us to become less self-centered and self-focused and to be more open to him and his own movements and his voice. But that's, that's purifying. And so that's why I think prayer is, it's worth choosing and 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 worth fighting for but but it's okay that it's hard because we we just have to be purified from ourselves and when prayer gets hard or there's dryness if we can make an act to trust jesus it's i just choose you and i know you're doing a lot here i know this is not easy but you're purifying me so i can i can i can be filled more with you and i can i can love like you 
And so I don't want to, I know that's a, probably a whole nother topic, but I think it's worth saying that, that do not be afraid of the dryness or the struggle, because if we can just say, Lord, like I want to be purified and somehow this helps me do that, where I'm going to be, it's going to be less about me and, and I can let go. And this purification is leading me to, to, to a deeper relationship with you. Um, that's what prayer does. That's what love does. And so. Thank you guys. And I, I appreciate, um, sort of not just what you said, but kind of what was also expressed through it is just that you both have a real heart for prayer and you know what you're talking about and you want people to pray. Amen. That's encouraging. So love it. Uh, do you want to, Desolation is not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why I, funny guy, why don't you say a prayer? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Father, we love you and we praise you and just thank you for the opportunity to be together um, as brothers, but also just with our audience. And thank you, Lord, that you continue to instill in us a desire and a fire to be in relationship with you. Thank you for the gift of prayer in our lives. Lord, thank you for the dryness. Thank you for the imperfections. Thank you for... Um, yeah, the challenges at times that just allows our hearts to be expanded to, to desire you more, to long for you more. Wherever we're at, Lord, with our prayer and desire and relationship with you, um, we just pray for a unique, particular, beautiful grace this day for all of us um, to, yeah, to trust even more your desire for us and desire to be in relationship with us. And we just say yes to you, Lord, uh, in this intimate space that that you desire to be with us that we can turn all the more um, and open our hearts to you, desire to be with you even more. Protect us, Lord, from what keeps us from you, any sin, struggle, distraction, worry, any part of the world. Free us to long for you and hope for you and desire you even more this day. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Uh, book recommendations for this would be Father Gallagher's Free People. What was it? Yeah. So setting the captives free. Yeah. Just on uh, it's on discernment, and then also just the discernment of spirits. Like he has a whole host of books: one on spiritual consolation, one on desolation. They're all like a. They're just all like all right. a whole series. So there's a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch out there yeah. from Father Gallagher. We like Father Gallagher. Huge fan. And um, again, this is a. Uh, Second to last, the penultimate, as the cool kids say, um, appeal for um, <laughs> monthly donors. If you are willing and able to do that, we would be exceedingly grateful. What dance and move are you going to do if we get 25 this episode? It's called The Woe. The Woe. We get 50, he'll do it for five minutes straight. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants that. Uh, um, and you can do that at spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco. Thanks, everybody. Yes, you can. Shout out to everybody. And we pray for you. <laughs> That's true. We pray for you. Peace. And appreciate you. Bye. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well. <laughs>